It's one of those things that helps us realise how blessed we are. And sometimes we spend life looking at what we haven't got. We spend life looking at what's not going right for us. We spend life looking at all of the wrongs around us, all of the wrongs we see in ourselves. But this morning, I'm encouraging you to focus on all the good stuff. Yeah. I'm encouraging you to focus on all the love, on all the hope, on all the joy that you see. I'm encouraging to you to focus on the things that are good in your life and mm -hmm. right in your life and just to allow your heart to be poured out with thanksgiving. You know, therapists will tell you to practice gratitude, mm -hmm. but we are told a long time before that to practice gratitude. It's not about what you might get, but it's about the place that you're in right now and how you experience that place right now. So we are thankful this morning. We're going to go into just a few moments of prayer. Um, if there are any prayer requests, please let me know. If anybody at home has got any prayer requests, please jot it down and feed and someone will hopefully pick that up. Before you. First of all, we pray for Ella and we just pray for her university 
um, experience and university journey, Lord God. We just pray that you will help her to integrate, you will help her to make connections, you will help her to learn and to do her very best. We pray that you will give her confidence. We pray you will help her to realise the gifts that she has and the blessing that she is. And help her to just walk in that realisation with confidence. Help her to make connections with the right people. People that are going to connect with her in, in a way that help her to learn and grow. We just pray, Father, that you will bless her. We pray for Paul and his team at work. You will just help him to lead that team effectively and do the things that they need to do and face the challenges that they have to face at this moment in time. We pray, Lord, for our country, for our government, and as it looks like we're about to get some um, mild uh, restrictions and we're about to, it looks like from the sound of it, go into another wave of, of, of pandemic, Lord God, and the arrival of this um, Omicron uh, variant, we just pray that you will give them wisdom, give them wisdom to know when to shut down and when to start, give them wisdom to not sit back and just watch things happen, but to respond accordingly. And we just pray that you will bless our nation, you will give us common sense and wisdom to, to follow the rules that we need to follow in order to keep us and our loved ones, our loved ones safe. Lord. And so we just pray, Lord God. We pray for all, I pray for all of my brothers and sisters at home, Lord God. And we just pray right now that whatever their uh, prayer requests are, whatever their needs are, that you will meet their needs, you will bless them. We pray for all of the sick this morning. We just pray that we will send healing and strength from God. We just pray that you will touch on my hand and that they will experience your hand of goodness. We pray for all of those people that we know that are suffering right now with coronavirus, Lord God. We just pray that you will bring them through. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit again today. Fill us with your Holy Spirit again today. Dry out the bits of us that are not um, the attitudes that live inside of us, that are not of the, that do not shine in your likeness. And help us to be more in your, your likeness. Help us to demonstrate your goodness wherever we are, wherever we go, to share your love, to give hope to others, to bring peace into circumstances and situations. And so we pray you bless us today in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen.
shielded, be glorified. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified. Scriptures, scriptures will speak in fresh words. 
word right now in the strong and the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, Hosanna. Communication. 
And then I'm going to talk about three features of godly communication. And I promise I'm not going to be speaking very long. This is what he says. Hold me to it, otherwise I'm not a trustee of the individual. <laughs> Alright, so let's you see this um, whole person listening. What you see is the image called Ting, T-I-N-G, Ting. It's a Chinese symbol that really highlights the need for whole person listening. And as we move across the symbol, at the upper left side of the symbol, we see the ear which stands for the, the, the need to hear what the listener is saying. The lower left hand side, sorry, um, sorry, the lower right hand side um, talks about the king, or the, sorry, the lower left hand side, this bit here, that's the king, the dominant one in relationship, demonstrating that the ear is dominant when it comes to listening, listening attentively and focusing. But go over to the upper right part of the symbol, we then begin to see that it's the mind and uh, this symbol for the mind and the mind uh, and the eyes through which we see and perceive the non-verbal messages that the speaker is saying and the bottom right hand side uh, there is the symbol of the heart and above the symbol of the heart there is a line which talks about oneness or unity so whenever we listen in this way we bring ourselves and the other person into one mind and to one heart whole person listening. Have you ever been talking to somebody and they're looking in another direction? Yeah. Talking to somebody and they're on the telephone. Talking to somebody and then you know they're looking beyond you. Yeah. The other day I was having a conversation with Maureen and uh, uh, I was and there was somebody behind her doing something that I was curious about. And she was trying to talk to me and she said, what are you looking at? Uh, I told her, oh sorry, there was a person behind you just doing something that I was interested in. And it's important to tune in as you listen, as, as the person is talking. And sometimes you know, uh, it's important to kind of put things down, stop, and see each other. So that, that brings me to this next thing. Um, the need to think about as we, as we relate to each other, as we talk to each other, are we looking face to face, or are we standing side by side, face to face, and side by side. Say it with me. Face to face. And side by side. Face to face communication is when two people sit in front of each other. They face each other. They see, hear, and feel each other. Side by side communication, on the other hand, is when two people are living and working in tandem together. Um, they're, they're working with each other. They're doing life together. They're getting things done. In romantic, erotic, sexual relationships, you need a balance of both face-to-face -face and side-by-side -side communication. Too much face-to-face -face can lead to a loss of self within the relationship because you're just looking at the other person all the time, you're into the other person all the time. It's too much face-to-face. -face. It can also feel a bit invasive. Tell me what's on your mind. I want to see into your heart. <laughs> It's so funny that we don't talk anymore. Okay? That's too much sometimes. And a person can feel swallowed up and swamped by the relationship. Too much side by side, and lovers become roommates, bill payers, caregivers, business partners, shit that pass in the night. Because you're face to face, you're doing stuff together, but you, you're side by side, rather. You're doing stuff together, but you're not face to face. You need in, in romantic relationships, in sexual relationships, in erotic relationships, you need a balance of face to face and side by side. I would dare say it's, in friendships it's the same thing. Also in relationships with your children and family members. Family members can get to a stage where you're so busy, university, work, college, doing stuff back and forth, that the only time you actually see each other is that only time as you just down a piece of chicken and then burn and go. No, sorry, that's my house <laughs> Okay, I want to talk to you about uh, corrupt communication. I want to say corrupt communication. Corrupt communication. Corrupt communication. Um, I want to give a trigger warning. <laughs> um, the, the person at the bottom is this lovely one named Candice Dillard. And um, Candice is a very nice person, but can kind of come across as contemptuous when she's arguing with her people in the real house of the Potomac. 
So I do not own the rights to this image, I just need to say it out front. Our corrupt communication. Paul says, not Paul, rather, the Paul in author of Ephesians says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Corrupt communication really is wrong, putrid, um, useless, or worthless communication. Corrupt communication is contentious. I must say contentious. Contentious, contentious abusive conversation. It is speech or communication that destroys, harms, and diminishes a person. Um, <clears throat> the danger of co content. In his 2005 book, Blink, author Mike Malcolm Gladwell um, references the work of a psychologist by the name of John Gottman. John Gottman has the singular distinction of being able to predict the survival of a marriage or relationship are within a rate of 90% accuracy, within a few short minutes of meeting the couple and observing their interactions with each other. According to Gladwell, and I'm quoting, one of Gottman's findings is that for marriage to survive, the ratio of positive to negative emotion in a given encounter has to be at least 5 to 1. Gladwell cites Gottman because after a few seconds of listening to a couple's interactions, Gottman is able to predict the survival of the relationship. Gottman has discovered what he calls the four horsemen that signal the death knell of any relationship. Number one, defensiveness. Number two, stonewalling. Stonewalling is when I'm basically doing the, the psychological equipment of going, no, 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 no. I'm not listening. I don't want to hear you. Shut it down. I'm done. We're not talking about this. The conversation is over. I'm stonewalling you. No, I'm stonewalling. And then, of course, criticism and contempt. According to Gottman, even within the four horsemen, there is one emotion that he considers the most important of all, and that is contempt. Contempt is the feeling or attitude that the person or thing that you're speaking to is beneath your consideration. When somebody's talking and you're thinking, look at this. It happens in relationship, not creation, once again. Hearing goes again. Blah, 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 blah. Contempt. Contempt epitomizes corrupt communication. Contempt is so damaging because it diminishes the other person. It, it's, it's almost like when you're talking to them, they don't have a point. They don't see your side of the, this, the conversation. It's like, really? Content. And um, I, I use this because, they, you know, I, I, when I looked at that, I wanted to get a, a, a visual of content. And I had to be really careful because guess who showed up on the visual of content? Uh, the, uh, three politicians showed up in content. Three politicians. Yes, the orange menace was one of them. Okay? The other one was pretty content. Oh wow. Content. Yeah. Yeah? And there was one other who I don't remember. And, and what it was, it's this social expression up here. It's where the eyes are flat and neutral. But there's a slight curving of the lid. Of the lid. Mm. That says. And then it's coupled with abusive language. Contempt. Contempt. And we have to be really careful that in our relationships we practice equality. No matter who's speaking. No matter who's speaking, no matter what their status is, because all are God's children. Yeah. And it's, we, can't, we can't lose this because sometimes, especially in hierarchical settings, we can feel like we're just a cleaner. Or you're just a waitress, or just a waiter, or you're just somebody serving me. One thing that really puts me off when I go into a shop is content. Yeah. And I experience it from time to time when you come in and they don't really want to serve you. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I literally take my money and walk out of the shop. Yeah. I am not going to give money to be treated with contempt. Contempt. What's up with the content? Content. Corrupt communication. Corrupt communication. Don't worry about that, I'm going to come here. So I want to share with you from Ephesians 4.29. I'm going to take a seat. 
four features of good communication. Godly communication. Go back to Ephesians chapter uh, 4 and verse 29. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But then it talks about that which is good, and I say good, good. then if I say necessary for edification, necessary for edification, and then three, it imparts grace to the hearers. Imparts grace. Grace to the hearers. So, so according to that, godly communication in relationships is beneficial. Secondly, it builds up. Thirdly, it imparts grace. It, it's beneficial, it beats, builds up, it imparts grace. Let's look at this beneficial. Godly communication is beneficial um, because it's in the best interest of the person who you're speaking to. It's in the best interest of the person who you're speaking to. It's not in the best interest of the person who's speaking. Set the dishwasher, I want to load the dishwasher. Um, because it's a good discipline. I want to know this question because it's a good discipline. Okay. Well, I feel like I'm disciplined now. Well, no, you need to let the dishwasher and own it now because the house needs to be clean. Now, who's that in interest of? Yeah. Now, you can try and spin it all kind of ways, but you want it done because you want it done. Yeah. And you just need to own that. Godly communication is beneficial because it's in the best interest of the speaker. And I would like us to think about whenever we're speaking to somebody, even when we're giving a difficult message, make sure it's beneficial. Yeah. Make sure it's going to benefit them in some way. When speaking, ask who will, it be, who will this be good for? Who will it benefit? Beneficial communication is not necessarily pleasant communication. And we've got all of this stuff in our society and in our culture where, where you have to speak nicely to me. Because I've known people who speak nicely to you and are poisoning you. Yeah, 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 come on now. They're speaking nicely to you, but they're harming you. Yeah. They're speaking nicely to you, but they've got ill intent. And I've seen some people who might sound a bit challenging and, and not harsh, not harsh, but hard. Do you see the difference? There's some people who speak hard. They speak difficult things. They tell you things you don't want to hear. But ultimately, it is going to be good for you because you need to hear it in order to grow, in order to progress, in order to experience success in life. You need to hear it. And so difficult conversations are, may feel unpleasant, but ultimately, they are preeminently helpful. How many of you can think about a difficult conversation that you've had that literally has changed the course of your life? Somebody pulled you up. I remember I used to come into school late. And I came in with um, my friend who had been fooling around on the way to school. And we had um, our only African Caribbean teacher who taught English and was the head of year seven. Um, his name is Mr. Walker. And I came into the class and, and uh, Chad Prescott came in and he said, he lived in Earlsfield and I lived down um, off East Hill. And um, I live nearer to the school, but we're both coming late. So Preggy comes in, that's what we used to call him, Preggy. Preggy comes in. And he says, sorry I'm late, sir. And then I come in, and I come in with this elaborate story. You know, <laughs> I was coming in, and they had the zookas, and I climbed over the fence. And then, <laughs> out of nowhere, there was this dangerous fox. And it went to bite my legs, but I kicked it off, and I survived. And look, you see the hole in my shoes that proves it. It's not poverty, it's the fox. <laughs> and, and so what Mr. Walker said, he 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 said, now Benny, you've got a gift with words. If you can ever add to that gift some self-discipline, you do some amazing things in life. Wow. I, 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 was, I was 11 years old and I still remember it to this day. It was a difficult conversation that he had in front of the whole class. <laughs> so, Preggy, Preggy just going to tell you, but Benny's going to give you a good conversation. It's all about it. But it's, it's a good story. And he gave me those words of advice. And to this day, I've never forgotten it. Godly conversation is beneficial to the hero. Yeah. 
always, whenever you're going to challenge somebody, sometimes you have to, you know, and, um, as a parent, as a colleague, as a manager, you have to tell people some difficult truths about things they need to improve on. Make sure it is not about your ego, but it is about their benefit. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Second, it builds up. The second feature of godly communication is that it builds up the other person. It is edifying. It's the old word, edifying. From where we get our word, edifice, meaning to build up. The phrase build up is translated from uh, two Greek words that are combined. The word oiko, from the word oiko, meaning house, and domo, meaning to build. Oikodomos, meaning to build up. And so when you speak, the, and the other word is the word, it's also the word encourage. So whenever you encourage somebody, you provide scaffolding that supports the structure. You know, the domain of tottering, what can I do? Am I able? Do I have the skill? But when you speak words that encourage them, it's scaffolding around them that allows them to stand strong, even in the face of adversity. Tell somebody, build them up. Yeah. Or say it like you mean, build them up. <laughs> speak words that build somebody up. It's the opposite of diminishing. Yeah. It's the opposite of diminishing. It's words that are constructive because they enable somebody to, to, to add to themselves and to become more. God communication builds. It builds confidence. It builds self-esteem. It builds self-efficacy. It builds self-awareness and it promotes growth. It builds the psychological scaffolding that allows somebody to be stable but also to achieve. Communicate to build up. Communicate to build somebody up. There's so much in this world that tears down. There's so much in this world that dismantles. There's so much in this world that pulls apart. What we need in all of our relationships is intentionality about building somebody up. As they face a hostile world. And you know, if you are if you are a marginalized member or a marginalized community, a community that is set aside, you need before you leave the home that family to build you up. If you're a woman going into a male-dominated world, you need people to build you up. If you're somebody who's LGBT going into a heterosexual world, you need somebody to build you up. If you're a member of um, black and minority ethnic groups that are you're going into environments that are racist, you need building up so that when you go in, you can deal with the various microaggressions that come without losing your stuff or falling into the stereotype of the angry black man, the angry black woman. I think James Baldwin was the one that said to be a Negro in America is to live with per in a permanent state of anger. Yeah. You need people to build you up. Build you up. Build you up. When communicating with someone, God communication builds up. And finally, and this is truly a finally, I told you I was going to be brief. Finally, Godly communication ministers grace. Greek, the Greek means literally is a gift of grace. Grace from the Greek word charis, from where we get our word charity, um, or charisma. The range of meaning includes it. It gives joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, loveliness. Good communication leads a positive and emotional, uh, a positive emotional and spiritual deposit. It leads a positive and a uh, positive emotional and spiritual deposit. You know, has anybody spoken to you and the words landed yeah. in a good way? Somebody spoke to you and, and, and you felt a pet in your step, you, you felt life, you felt confidence, you felt strength come back into you because good, godly communication will minister grace to the person who heard. In one minute they were in doubt about what they were able to do. They were a bit unsure, but you came in and you spoke, and that word that you spoke ministered grace. Now they're ready to face a giant. Now they're ready to face down a lion. Now they're ready to pull apart a bear. Now they're ready to flinch up the lion because they've had some grace ministered to them. When we build our relationships, we must interact in ways that communicate the worth and value of the other person. Contempt is lethal to any relationship. If you find yourself becoming contentful, stop. 
Figure out what's going on inside of you. Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you're hungry. Sometimes you're angry. Sometimes you're just fed up. Sometimes you can actually be depressed. Yeah. And you're lashing out at everyone around you. Sometimes you maybe have a deep seated anger about something that somebody has done, but you've never had the conversation with them about it. So it's coming out in the form of content. Yeah. Whatever it is, find out and stop. Content is lethal to your relationship. I talked about content in romantic relationships. How many family relationships yeah. are facing content? Where you have a father who doesn't love the son or daughter, a daughter who doesn't love a sibling. Content, lethal to any relationship. Godly communication will be beneficial. It will build up, it will support the well being and the self worth of the other person. And finally, it will give the gift of a strong and positive moral and emotional deposit. It will impart grace. God bless you. just one moment um, and discuss so we thank you for everybody who's joined us today via Facebook Live. Just before we go, we want to announce that on Sunday the 19th of December will be our Regen Christmas celebration. We didn't have one last year obviously because we were in um, lockdown. Um, we are hoping, subject to how things pan out over the next few weeks, um, to have that. So uh, what we are going to be doing, we're going to be doing a couple of things. First of all, we're going to be meeting here at 11 o'clock on that Sunday. We're going to ask everybody to come 11 on the dot if they can. And we're going to be having a game session. Okay, So we're not going to be having services, but we will be praying together and sharing together. And we will be having a game session. Um, the room is big enough for us to be socially distanced. And I believe we might even have a mechanism in place to just appreciate people that don't want to be engaged or people that do want to be engaged and we will put that in place on that Sunday. So that's Sunday the 19th. And then afterwards we'll be going to the Ravensbury Arms which is just up the road in Mitcham um, and we're booking the table now. We're booking a table for about 25, uh, 20 at the moment, 20, 25 people. What's going to happen is Lisa's going to send out a, te a text via or a message via WhatsApp on Tuesday afternoon. And what we would like people to do is confirm whether they want to come or not. So we do appreciate that there are some people that may not want to um, come because of you know, shielding and all of the rest of it. But we also appreciate there will be people that want to come. So it's entirely up to you then what the cost is um, during the, um, with, with the text. Um, children will go free uh, and also People over the age of 65 will be free but because the church will pay for that. And if you are struggling, so if you want to come and you know you can't afford it, okay, please just message us privately and we will arrange that. We are the Regeneration Project and we are here to support each other. Um, so we will arrange that. So, um, yeah, so that's coming out. Please let us know. What we want to do, we want to know early if it's more than 20 people or 25 people just so that we can arrange the place at the um, restaurant, um, but we're anticipating around 20 um, to 25 um, people. And I think that is it, isn't it? Um, oh, and there will be a secret Santa, which there will be a message. Going. A message has already gone out about that, so please give the details and respond to that if you want to be a part of the secret Santa. So again, you don't have to be a part of it if you don't want to. But if you do, please respond to that. Also, I was going to say that if you are listening to us via Facebook Live and you're not part of the WhatsApp group and you do want to meet us um, and you do want to share with us and maybe celebrate with us Christmas, you are invited to come as well. All you have to do is send us a message via Facebook and then we will add you to the WhatsApp group and we will connect with you in that way. This is God bless you this afternoon. Have a great Sunday and we will see you soon. Amen.